Hello, folks. Welcome back to another episode of the Scarlet and Great Podcast. Johnny Bullet here with the People's Champ, Florida, Corey Thompson. Corey, why do people love you so much? I'm a lovable fuzzball. You are. You are you're lovable. You're lovable. Apparently, apparently you're hot. Didn't know that until recently. Apparently, even though you have this Wilson and you know how to play it. You got this Wilson, yeah, you got on the YouTube if you guys join in and you want to see Corey's hotness. He's got this Wilson Wilson thing going on where he likes to And you know what? I think it's good now he's a man of mystery. Now the ladies are like How hot is he? I want to see. And he's just, you know. So, anyways, guys, thanks for joining you us just here. Ruined on, it for everybody. Was... It, no, that's what's happening. Join us here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Like and subscribe. Share it with somebody. Tell a friend. Um, and also, thank you for listening, downloading the podcast. If you're listening to it that way, find us however you stream. Apple, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher. I don't know. Probably some things that I don't even know exist yet. We're probably there. We're probably there. Thank you wherever you are and however you're listening for tuning in. We got a nice little review show for you for the Rutgers game. That Rutgers game, well, how do we feel about that Rutgers game? As interesting, to say the least, right? Um well, here's some things we can focus on. One, we're all good friends. Uh, um, no, the second quarter was good. The second quarter was uh, that was a good second quarter. If I'm over here being a rah rah guy, right? Good second. We tried quarter. our best. We did try our best for a quarter. Uh, look, Corey, this this is I'm going to start calling this from now on the Rutgers effect. We used to not have it, right? I think when they first joined the Big Ten, it was, ah, Rutgers is, mm, we don't think they're good, but they're new here. So we'll play like they're a normal team. And whatever happens, happens. And what happened is we kicked the crap out of them year in and year out. The last two years, we've realized who they are, right? And I think the team has sleptwalked. I mean, last year, this team didn't sleepwalk. Last year, besides fumbling versus Penn State, Corey, they looked so complete. They hurt people. This is your fault, by the way. My fault. Yeah, because you kept – they listened to the podcast. And you Did kept I? downplaying Rutgers and saying how boring they are and horrible to watch. You always use them as the example. I do. Well, it, and, no, hold on. Yeah, No, it's your – no, I've just proven it. Okay, no. I was willing to say, hey, Corey, are they – did they go – remember I used to say if they try really hard and improve a lot, maybe they can just be bad. And I was like, hey, Corey, have they tr improved so much that they're average? And you said last week, you said, no, they're just bad. They've improved, but they're bad. I'm, are you still thinking that or are you ready to call them average? No, they're still bad. We were just really bad. For so, a, wow. Yeah. So you're doubling down. Yeah, I, I don't think they did anything special other than a bunch of trick plays. I mean, it, sure. and we got we got bored. You know, I, I I said it during the game on the on Twitter that we were just legitimately really bored. I think the coaching's the players except for Ryan Day, he was heated, but still, yeah. right? I think the players can won. They, I'm sure they're told. Hey, you know who I blame? I blame the hype video, folks. Did you see a Rutgers hype video this week? Yeah, there was. Dang it. I didn't see you, it. You don't pay attention to them because you don't like them. So. Oh, it's not that I don't like them. They just don't hit me. But no, I don't think one went around. And the play. It, it, it didn't hit like the one for. Uh... We couldn't get up because there wasn't a hype video. That's why Harry Miller stunk. It's because he didn't have a hype video. Are you ready to revoke his scholarship? If we had a segment on the show. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and all serious. We get back to the JT Borland segment where yeah. Harry Miller was a prime example. Yeah. For that in all seriousness, I yeah, that was terrible. He was rough. He yeah, was rough. but I hope he gets better. I hope he gets better. But you so know, we can right, all be friends. Yes. Yeah. So we can all be friends. Uh, and I think he can. He can. He should be able to. Um, oh, he's five star. You would hope so. Yeah, he's the starter at Ohio State for a reason. He's he can't he, that because game. We're all good friends. Yeah. Um. Let's go, Corey. Let's this Rutgers team. I I will say I don't think that the coaching staff wanted the team to sleepwalk. And you, you know, mentally, you tell them, don't check out, don't check out, stay hyped, stay motivated. You need all this, you know, 
you know, they'll do anything they can to keep you out of play, whatever they tell them, one game at a time. You know, don't take anything for granted. But mm-hmm. when the when the the players see the coaches sub in early, when the players see the coaches mm-hmm. calling the game a little differently, mm-hmm. when they when the players to see the coaches tell them to give ten yard cushions, when the players see the coaches stick to something that's not working just to work on it, I think that affects the players psychologically. And Ryan Day can yell and scream as much as he wants, and rightfully he should have. But I don't think that's enough to reverse the psychology of, hey, guys, this is a glorified scrimmage. Let's work on some stuff. Tell me where yeah, I'm wrong. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you. I, you know, it. I noticed in the third series that uh, all the rookie wide receivers were out there. At one, third one. Yeah, third three, series. Three of them, yeah. Um, third series. And I remember saying to my father, who's watching the game, I mean, I was, whoa, he's got G. Scott, Fleming, and Big Jigba out there. I mean, with Fields and the starters, that's. And there was obviously times where he was, Ryan Day was calling run plays just to stubbornly get that run game going, you yep. know, because it's been bad. And, and then again, like you said, the players notice this. And he, Ryan Day, he screams through before the game, take every opponent seriously. Uh, you can get beat anytime. He blah 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 blah. But then the players see you doing this, and they think, "Do you do you really even believe that?" You right. know, you're not, I mean, you're, you're still calling a vanilla game plan. But as you could see, and I said it on Twitter, and I had a lot of people agree with me because a lot of smart people in Buckeye Nation. And if you agree with me, you're probably a pretty smart person. Amen. Yeah. Um, it, it was clear Ryan Day could air raid anytime he wanted to. It was very obvious. I mean, that- Justin Fields had no issues air raiding. Uh, and I think that in the team knows that too, right? They yeah, sense that oh, too. Yeah. It's like, hey, coach, we'd like to get in the end zone now. Can you go ahead and call that play? Yeah, it's the worth 38 well, yards away. Well, Let's just end this drive. Yeah. Right. Well, we're still working on some. No, no, coach, we'd just like to go to the end zone, please. Okay, I'll call the deep ball. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Chris Olave, go deep. Please, yeah. How open was Jamison Williams on that touchdown, by the way? He just. He just juked his guy and was gone. Yeah, great play call. I think I think we did something. I th- we put Olave and Wilson on the same side of the field, and then put Ruckert out wide, and on the same side of the field, Wilson. I think I think the safeties got caught looking over to, uh, or Williams. Sorry, Ruckert with Williams. I think the safety got caught looking over at Wilson, um, which I don't blame him. I think he just got torched by Garrett Wilson again, well, best player of all time. Yeah, okay, yeah. I mean, you got to watch for the best player of all time, but. Uh, Williams, it's just, I think Fields was even a little shocked at how open he was because the ball was late and it was like, he just was like a punt basically just dropped down and catch it. But, uh, cause he, it was just, he was just, all right, oh my gosh, is that, that's our fastest receiver. And he's just standing back there. Okay. We'll just throw a drop on the dime there. Um, we'll get into it later about Fields ac- accuracy, which is insane, insanity right now. <laughs> I couldn't even finish the word. It's, it's incredible. <laughs> Uh, tongue twister now because I, I, I can, I'm thinking of these plays in my head, but uh, f- f- the only elite part of our team right now, based on this record game, the elite part. I mean, it, I still called uh, Togi and Garrett elite as a tandem, but the elite part of the team is week in and week out is the, is the pass game. It's unbelievable. Ryan Day has completely revolutionized the passing game in Ohio State. Um, I understand we, we we didn't get the we didn't get the passing numbers until Urban Meyer came. That's a fact. That was a QB friendly system for sure. But now we are implementing a more pro style pass system with Ryan Day, and I'm ready to call it, Johnny. You ready? I'm ready to call it. Justin Fields is the greatest quarterback in Ohio State history. I'm Whoa! He's passed Haskins for me. Three games. Seventeen games, but yeah, he's passed Haskins. Well, no, 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 no. It's three games because last year you said he wasn't. I I just. At this point, I think he's actually a lot more efficient passer than Haskins was in, in his Haskins one year right now. I mean, it, now granted, it could, he, like you said, he could Three drop games. off. He could drop off, but I don't see it happening. He, he's he's unreal. This is nobody's done this what he's doing right now. Nobody's done this. Well, you're entitled to your opinion. I'm not ready to go there. It's been three games against. I just uh, said you agree with me. If you agree that if Buckeye fans who agree with me are smart people, we played three games with a combined opponents with a combined one win over, and the one win came off of a bad to a bad team after seven turnovers. So, hey, Penn uh, State's for real. They're zero and three. Um, that just shows you how good the rest of them are. It, Maryland, 
uh, which which I think is, is a decent team, actually. Um, I know. I, I I mean, again, I'm not saying that. I, I just I legitimately believe that. I'm not saying that it has to be set in stone. Some people still believe Troy Smith is so whatever. But yeah, um, no, I, I think I think uh, skill for skill, it's it's very very good. I think he's developing. I think he's doing some nice things. I think you agree he's, he's at least taking that next step that we hoped he would. Oh yeah, he, he's making improvements. I st- I still think he's late on some things, make some mistakes here and there, but he's take he's better. Like he's better this week than he was in week one, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I think he's better than he was in week two. Um, I was complaining after week two. I'm like, can he not see free, free blitzers? Mm-hmm. They're telling him, hey, I've got my guy beat, Justin, and I'm about to smack you. And he's just, oh. Now, this game, he actually made some blitzers miss. Some mm-hmm. pass rushers miss, and I'm like, okay. Which is another problem in and of itself. We talked about the offensive line. So. Yeah, so he he got to the next step. Yeah, uh, he's doing really – man, his, his deep ball might be the best deep ball. It might – I don't know. I don't see how I can take anything off Haskins' deep ball because it was amazing. It's his deep ball is at least as good as anyone has ever done it. I will give you that. Even, that I can that say pass that. to the lava that was the last touchdown. I got to talk about it. That might be the greatest pass I've ever seen in Ohio State history. Third, th- fourth, or third and two hundred yards against Northwestern to Terry McLaurin is my best. That's a good uh, one. That was a really, really good one. Uh, but that one to Olave was nice. And it's not, and people people might say, well, it's just a touchdown against Rutgers. It's late in the game. That ball placement was 100% perfect. It could not have been placed better. It was on his back shoulder with a roaming safety over there, uh, co- closing in quickly. And, beat and he had to safety. rope it. And he had to rope that thing there. And I, I, was, I sat there and I pointed at the television like that Leonardo DiCaprio meme. That's an NFL throw. That was an absolute NFL dime that he just threw. Yeah, I just you know with a drink in hand and everything. Yeah. That that, <laughs> that was game was crazy. driving me to drink, so I knew I had some whiskey in there. I know you don't even drink, but I I also that game was miserable. Like mm-hmm. everything else was miserable. We're getting to the bad part. Don't worry. Yeah. No. Well, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Um, look, I don't know that Harry Miller can use this. I'll say the O line, but Harry Miller had a rough, rough night. He had an Isaiah Prince esque night. I don't know you can use this. You're paying your way for the rest of the year. I don't know you can use the Rutgers effect excuse, the sleepwalk excuse. That wasn't sleepwalking for him. I was just getting beat. He needed those reps. He's still young. He needs those reps. He he, He just getting beats all. Yeah. (laughs) Getting beat like he stole something. I mean, he was. I gotta get that. Beat. Now I gotta get that audio clip. Yes, you sure do. Um, he's getting beat, and I mean, even Wyatt Davis had a holding penalty. Josh Myers didn't look great, and you brought up to me privately. Well, maybe he's looking over his left shoulder the whole time, wondering if Harry's holding up his end of the deal. Um, and that really, that really made the team struggle. That made it to where Ryan Day's like, okay, now I have to call the pass play. Which one? The pass play, the mm-hmm. big one, the one that's going to get us in the end zone. Because we're in second and twenty all the time, you know, like <laughs> it was it was really bad. And then again, I don't. It's got to get better. We talked about it preseason. If Harry Miller is not that good, and Josh Myers still is going to have his sporadic type play he can do with pass rushing at times, mm-hmm. that's a massive weak spot at the same spot in the line. And if Rutgers can expose it now, an improved Rutgers team with three or four legitimate nice players on that team uh, on the defensive side of the ball, uh, and I, I understand you're not just going to stonewall them every time, mm-hmm. but I I think they look much more dominant against Penn State than they did against Rutgers. Yeah, they were better against Penn State for sure. I can't even explain. I mean, again, I don't think it's a sleepwalking thing either. Maybe it's a valuable uh, film 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 session for them. Uh, because there was a couple times this is jailbreak. J- Justin Fields is like usually he could uh, escape, but it was a couple jailbreak sessions where he just forget it going down. I mean, it is what it is. Just give it up. Uh, thankfully, it didn't force him into a, a a couple bad decisions with the ball. But that's that's how good Fields is, really. Yeah. And that's how much it's just for whatever it's worth. Wherever he's got, when he's come since he's come to Ohio State, he makes good decisions with the football. Yeah, it's uh, like JT Barrett wouldn't want to throw an interception. <laughs> Dwayne didn't throw me either. Fields won't either. It's like uh, when th- Fields and Dwayne threw even less than JT, and JT took decent care of the ball. It's like, no, 
Uh, he's the, they're the opposite of Brett Favre. I will take this sack before I throw this ball away. It's I much cooler to throw it in triple coverage. <laughs> nope, I will take this sack. Like, just you need to tuck it and get six and slide. Nope, not a man unless you take a sack. Throw it in the stands, Justin. Nope. You know, it's Taking funny. Stack. Brett Favre made me a Packers fan, and yet I, Johnny, you can you test this. I'm at his house just ripping on Favre like crazy, just because of he he was Mister. I mean, it had to be frustrating. He was a roller coaster. <laughs> What'd you say? You you when he had six interceptions? You just yeah, stop. And a <laughs> stop throwing it to the other team. Yeah, at, after about three, I was like, he keeps doing it. <laughs> it's like why. Yeah, so beyond the offensive line, Corey, which cannot open holes for the, they either open a sweet hole for the run game, which at least they're doing better because the first was like, oh my gosh, they might have figured it out. (laughs) Oh, I was going to tell you this. I counted, and I I told you this privately. First half alone, three missed tackles forced by Teague. Missed tackles, not one of them was I think a little bit of strength, you know. But I don't care. You make it. People, he start being more elusive, making people miss. He's finding his stride. Mm-hmm. He's finding his style. Um, and but there's pl- certain plays. Did you you know what I'm talking about, Corey? It was third or third or fourth quarter. We had like three blockers to the right, and Rutgers had four or five defenders over there. And we ran a lot lo- a, a slow developing play with Teague over there. I'm like. I was a little, I'm like, Ryan Day, you're a great play caller. Why that play? It was never there. It was always defended. And the slow developing stretch is not Teague's forte. Is it possible he's giving Fields more opportunity to call audibles at the line and maybe Fields is missing the reads a little bit? Whoa, whoa. whoa. That's pretty in. Ah. (laughs) Man, more work. You think about that. That is, what if, I knew he was treating it like a scrimmage. Mm. Well, it's that much like a scrimmage. And instead of calling the play, he's like, no, I'll call any general play. They have it well defended. I'm not calling it from the sideline. They didn't look to the sideline as much this game. I'm not calling. I'm not. I'm not having them. look. But then again, I don't know any college quarterbacks that college coaches turn loose. And they always look like this side. I mean, hey, remember Zach Smith, though, talked about Trevor Lawrence last year and how he was struggling the first few games because they were giving him, putting him in situations to make him struggle so he would grow and get better. Well, that, I think, is, though, the play call. Do you throw it deeper? Do you check down or burn it? Not. Well. Not. Maybe it's hey. different for Ryan Day is my point. Is Maybe it's it's a <sighs> situation where. Hey, you think Justin, he's. I, don't, I need you to be you a think he ha- but is he allowed to? Has he ever even told him, hey, this is how you would audible a play at the line if you saw something you didn't like? I'm just throwing theories. I don't know. You know. I mean, you, you got him over there doing pay- – you think Ryan Day has Justin Fields trained to be Peyton Manning. Actually, I, I think I, you have I, to be- ice cream, ice cream. Hey, 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 chiclet, seven zebra, seven zebra, five, 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 go. You think he's doing that? No, I don't think to, to, to that level, no. But I, I do think you know. A, <laughs> you ever seen the Peyton Manning stuff on that? Yeah, it's it's where they insanity. they say yeah. if he says a certain word, all the rest of it doesn't mean anything, and not to pay yeah. attention. <laughs> Omaha was basically a uh, uh, you know, the Omaha was just basically a decoy to people. Like, what does Omaha mean? Yeah. Um, but no, it, it's uh, look today's NFL, and it, no question about it. That's where Justin Fields wants to go, and Ryan Day's trying to get him there. Today's NFL, the, the McVeighs, the LaFleurs, the Belichicks, for what it's worth. He's, he's been doing it for years because he had a, a brilliant quarterback to do it. Now he's got Cam Newton, but you know, it's just like, here, this is how you do it. And Cam just, I don't Cam know, I, I want to go dress my hair. Yeah, but, I want to wear a nice hat. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, Zach Taylor even uh, with Burrow. And so, the, the way that these guys are doing things now is they like call a play, but they have in the personnel set like four or five different variations of a, of a call you can make at the line. They give those quarterbacks like Aaron Rodgers a lot of freedom. Mm. Now, well, I'm that's... kind of wondering if he's kind of mentally mm. preparing them for that. That's where the NFL is going because as we, the joke goes, anybody who's even shook hands with Sean McVay is becoming a head coach. That's <laughs> where, so a lot of NFL offenses are wanting to go. We're, we're seeing how it works with the Rams and the Packers. You know, people say I look like Sean McVay. 
Maybe. I don't know. You got a huge beard. You look like Santa Claus to me right now. No, no one said that. I, I just was hoping people would Joel say Clatt, that. I've heard about a couple times. You look yeah, that was, Joel Clatt. that was before the beard. Um, yeah, you, you can't do it with the beard. No, but no, nah, uh, no, you're now that sounds more viable that he gives a, a play to Justin Fields and within it is a set. Hey, if you see this, flip it to that. You don't need to look to the sideline for that. Zach's probably listening to the show right now. These idiots. That's not right. Good. Well, uh, we're not. We're not football experts. This is fun to theorize, right? Theorize, yeah. 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 Now, it doesn't sound far fetched though that he gives them a play, and like you said, if he sees something, you just. I have to watch the, the game again, but I didn't see them looking to the sideline a whole bunch that game. I don't remember them because it's noticeable when they clap and then they stop. Right. Yeah. I don't know that they did either. Um, I I was busy. All, to be fair, I shoved a pencil in my eye in the third quarter, so. Uh, you I do that too, huh? Yeah. Yeah. That this game brought it out of a lot of. That people. was the after the drink too. It's like, well, the whiskey ain't helping. I gotta do something here. Yeah. Well, so let me go ahead and, and stab myself. Did you finish off all the candy and the de- depression watching that. Oh yeah, that two two gallons of ice cream. Um. <laughs> uh, so uh, let's talk about let's talk about the defense. They I felt like I felt like it was not called well. I felt like it was just cushion, cushion, cushion. And then I felt like it was a little bit of sleepwalking, lack of aggression, dare Rutgers to be accurate, which they they were they were sporadic in their and inaccurate sometimes. Sometimes they were, sometimes they weren't. Um, they actually they, completed like around sixty eight percent of their passes, and, and had more to complete. Honestly, if they went through better balls, well, uh, the, the thing is, they had a four point nine yard per average on their pass. That's what they yeah. do. They'll dink and dunk you. Well, they had yes, and they had. Uh, what we seem to do is make them throw it to the wide side of the field, almost daring them to, and give huge cushion over there. So we just close on it, but we gave it to them and they took it. They missed that throw sometimes, but they did take it. Um, and the other thing, well, I'll just say, I think the defense is not, this is not an elite secondary. I'm ready to call it. We said, we never oh, said I can't they call fields, but you can call this. Yeah. Cause this is no, no, best of all time and not elite. <laughs> Uh, this non-elite secondary will not be an elite set. I, they can get better. They will not be elite even by the end of the year. They can get better. Um, but, I, you know, I would give... Losing Cam Brown is showing itself to hurt right now. I would give a Buffalo nickel for a Jordan Fuller right now. Man, you know, that's crazy that we're not even saying we want Jeff Okuda or Damon Arnett back. Or Chase Young, the number two pick in the draft. Yeah. Well, we're talking about secondary. I would take Chase Young in a heartbeat, but, yeah, but I, uh, I might take Akuda though because man, he cleans everything up. No, you mean Fuller? You mean take Fuller? Uh, yeah, that's what I said. No, you see, said no, no, I did. Fuller. Yes, you want me to play I back to you. I could have the stun. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was wrong. Uh, Fuller, Fuller. I would. He just cleans everything up, man. And you, yeah. you then you get Proctor in a better role, closer to the line of scrimmage. Um, it, it's just all around better, maybe. There's so many. <laughs> the defense, I think, becomes, I don't know, a touchdown a game better with him on the field instantly. More than a touchdown, I would say. Um, Probably. Because Hooker is not Jordan Fuller. Um, and and I, I don't I think he could be a solid player. And now, granted, Fuller in his sophomore year showed promise, and then he showed some mistakes and whatnot. So it's like maybe Hooker gets better, you know, in a couple of years. But right now he clearly is a big drop-off from Jordan Fuller in that single high. Proctor is getting better in that box safety spot. He really is that bullet. Um, he he's he's actually working off tackles. He's I mean off blocks and he's making a tackle. Uh, he looks I give athletic him, and explosive athletic. again. He's getting the reps, so he's getting the experience. And maybe they move him to single high like next year. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, Wade is Shane. Our buddy Shane right here on the Scarlet Empire ne- Network uh, uh, Empire. Scarton Great Empire. Sorry, I can't say it right. Anyway, uh, our buddy Shane said it perfectly today in private. He said he's like Orlando Scantrick. He's always in position but can't make the play. And I I mean, Sean's not getting abused and beaten. No. But he's, but he's not making the play. Right he's now. not coming down with it. And it looks like, it looks like uh, well, you remember in 2018, Sheffield in our network. Sheffield's always right there, yeah. But the, his head was never around. At least Sean can see the play, and it's not happening as often as it did to Arnett and Sheffield that year, which is encouraging. Yeah, um, well, I, I, I think Sean it's almost like Sean. It's almost like Sean surprised when they throw at him. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think he'll be fine. And and uh, I think in zone, even on the touchdown, he gave up technically. He was in zone, and he made a right call, but he just couldn't make the play. I mean, he didn't out jump a guy probably four inches taller than him. I, I, mean, I yeah, don't get it wrong. I mean, it's not. Yeah. I'm not sitting there thinking. I mean, people were getting mad at Sean because they're only seeing the negatives right now. But honestly, he's he's playing pretty well. Not and he's. I thought a couple of times I threw slants at him. He was right on him and did a great job. But uh, Sean's not the problem. Banks scares me a little bit. I I remember coming into the season thinking Banks was going to be it. And I'll he tell looks you, really athletic, but kind of lost. Athletic. But kind of lost. Yeah, he, he's just worse. You saw him a couple of times. Had that been a better ball? Yeah. Uh, and it, and, and um, it, yeah, I just don't. Mm, he's he's scaring me a little bit. Williamson is what he is. I mean, he's I think he's probably doing okay in coverage. He's not really great against the run. Uh, he's small, not terribly athletic, but and know. Tyreek Smith doesn't look like or Tyreek Johnson doesn't. Man, look you like and you and Bill Rabinitz. Or... I did it. I just had it in my head. Say Johnson. You know why? Because Tyreek Smith sounds like a cornerback's name, and Tyreek Johnson sounds like a defensive end's name. It's n- and it's not fair. Weren't they in the same recruiting class too? Maybe. I don't remember. I It's not fair. Tyreek Johnson is mm-hmm. showing that he is athletic, but he's not ready. He's not the answer yet. You know, I missed on a screen, and he, oh, that he, was about, he was about to get torched on that little fade in the back of the end zone. He had to reach out and hold. Um, yeah, he hasn't had, he hadn't been great so far. But, but I, but we talked about that. This would be mm-hmm. the game to get him reps. Yeah, well, he, he that's that's the thing is that's why the defense was so bad in the fourth quarter, especially um, third quarter. They were they were being gimmicked to death and they were bored. I get it, but fourth quarter we were emptying the bench. It was just every. every it's like, hey, you're the water boy, get out there, you know. It's just like whatever. Mm-hmm. But Tyreek was in look great. Uh, the secondary has a lot of problems, but I would still say people are overreacting a little bit to them. Yeah, you can't judge them. They do need to get better. To oh, be a yeah. playoff team, they, they got, absolutely they need to get better. But none, of, nobody looks great this year. Bama maybe looks like the most complete, and they had they had their sleepwalk game against Ole Miss, and nearly got. I mean, they got tip for tap for three and a half quarters. So maybe this was our Ole Miss game. Maybe maybe this was. Um, Clemson obviously went down, but without Lawrence and without some defensive starters. So we'll see. This team doesn't look elite. No. However, nobody does. Exactly. They look top four. I didn't say elite. They look top four. Undisputed top four. Mm-hmm. They just don't look awesome, but no one looks absolutely I, I think complete. right now Justin Fields, Garrett Wilson, and Chris Olave, and they'll say Jeremy Ruckert in there as well, are making them look elite. Yeah. Uh, be, uh, compared to the rest of college football. It doesn't mean we're not without. Doesn't mean we're not without our issues or whatever, but it, it, but the, 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 that combination is so over the top good. That mm-hmm. you feel like you can beat anybody because of those four. Yeah, yeah. And no, I would, at I'll least at least stand a chance. You at least oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. you at least be in a shootout with with the freak shows at Alabama. We right? have such a freak show of a QB that it's like. Yeah, you know. I feel like with Bama and Ohio State, it might be whoever has a ball last. Yeah, same with Clemson. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe even I don't know about Notre Dame. I still think we could beat Notre Dame. But. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know why they're never going to impress me. They just start. I mean, they had a good game against uh, Clemson. Good for them, but we'll see. Uh, they might even lose to North Carolina. Who knows? But uh, that that being said, going back to the defense, get back on top on on the train here <laughs> on the track. Uh, I'm such a Michael Scott when it comes to phrases. It's so bad. Uh, but or White Goodman from Dodgeball. But um, yeah. Anyway. I I do the the promising thing is, dude. I I think going from the secondary to the linebacking core, linebacking core still playing pretty well. Uh, and it doesn't look bad. Borland had our only sack for the game, for what it's worth. Uh, that was the yeah. Uh, what? Well, they sent him on a blitz right before halftime because they know it's a long developing pass play. Mm-hmm. That's about the. That's tough. Borland should thank his coaches for that. Thank you, guy. Yeah, it, uh, he was our leader in tackles too. He had six total tackles, but. Uh, Baron Browning to me is starting to become a complete linebacker, but he's not just a linebacker. They got him out wide a lot. He's just, they're finally figuring out how to use his athleticism effectively for our defense. That stretch, what he excels at the bit. I seen him do it last year too. When there's a stretch run to the outside where it's like a read option, but it's the, 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 
the running back just running wide before he ever turns up field, he ain't getting away from Baron Browning. Remember no. last year when they tried it, Corey, and he suplexed a kid in the backfield? You know the play. That and he first game he, of the year, I think. Yeah. He did the same thing without the suplex this game. That's why I want him out there. That's why I don't care about He's his a monster. mistakes. He's I have I put this on Twitter, Corey. Here's a hot take of all time type of deal. You mm-hmm. want to get an all time statements. Has Ohio State ever had a 240 pounder move that fast? Catsamore. That Catsamore. You think he was that fast? Catsamore was a freak. He, he, I mean, he, he over, he got, he overshot his weight. He was around 270 by the time he left. But his freshman year when he was 245, I, I, you couldn't believe how fast he was. Wow. Well, if you have to go back to maybe one of the freakish, most freakish linebackers of all time to match him, then that's pretty good. Oh, yeah. Don't get me wrong. And as far as athletic linebackers, Browning's in that upper echelon for Ohio State of all time. I mean, it, people might say Raekwon. Raekwon, I don't think he was that fast. Raekwon was not the greatest athlete in the world. He was a and very I, good linebacker. But Jerome, was, Jerome Baker was really fast. I don't know if he's as fast as Barron, and I think Barron's bigger. Baron's bigger and Jerome's more. He was two twenty five, two thirty. Yeah, uh, he's playing great in the NFL now. Good for him, man. Uh, but he and he's athletic as all get out. But Baron is the total package. He might be. He might be pushing two fifty. He's that big and he's huge. That's you know, a he, man. yeah. The, I think it's roster weight's two forty. Who knows? Who knows how many burgers he ate before the game? Uh, the only person he can't catch right in before the game. <laughs> I mean, the only person he can't catch is Travis Etienne, and that's. Travis is really fast. He could he could almost keep stride with him though. Well, I don't know. I'm still having nightmares. <laughs> I, I put it this way: if he doesn't start with a ten, Etienne doesn't have a ten yards head start. Who knows? You know, but uh, Baron Browning, I've seen him in this year's games chase down wide receivers from behind. I mean, he's 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 the real deal. And now he's finally putting it all together. And Washington, buddy, you're doing a great job, Coach Washington, uh, getting these guys ready because. We really felt with Bill Davis, Baron Browning was going to be a complete waste of a talent because mm-hmm. he, he couldn't develop them. And now two years of Washington. Now I, I wish to God that he could have had four years of Washington because uh, Washington is a real deal. And and he he's he's getting better all the time, Johnny. And it's incredible. And I love the fact they're giving him more responsibility, putting him out wide. He's covering tight ends yeah. in the slot. He's even on tight ends out wide. It's uh, out on the uh, on the edge. It's it's crazy. Yeah, a lot of trust there, which is it's a good. There's the next step you want to see him take. Um, it's going to put him in the NFL. The fact he can cover tight ends. Another thing that made it hard on the defense was, and I'm not excusing it, but it is certainly hard. Is Shiano went full trickeration all the time. You have to be ready for that. You have to be ready for an onside kick almost every time. And and look, I don't think less of Shiano for doing that at mm-hmm. all. He had his job. It is to stay within the confines, okay. confines of the rules, and do the best he can at, on his, at the team. The reason why people don't usually uh, you go to trick plays is not because it is uh, frowned upon or it is this, that, and the other. It's because it's high risk. Mm-hmm. And if you have, if you, if your talent is close to as good or as good or better than your opponent. Then you just line up, knock them over, and you play smash mouth football, right? You run by them, mm-hmm. you throw touchdowns, you run it down the throat. That's the typical in control way. Well, because that's more demoralizing, actually, when you can just run it down their throat. Sure. Yeah. And that's, it's more control. There's less bad things to happen. Yep. The trick plays can really go south if the defense has it snuffed out mm-hmm. or, you know, you, you trust a wide receiver to throw a pass. Well, they're not quarterbacks for a reason, those type of things. They're risky. That's why people don't do it. Not because it's just like the triple option. The triple options is gimmicky, Mm -hmm. but you do it to, it's not because it's frowned upon. You do it because you don't have as much talent and you need to even the scales out. Northwestern created Randy Walker, Northwestern. I told you this before the show, created the spread offense in the college football, essentially to compete with better schools. You know, I mean, that was the only way they could compete was spread you out. Yeah. Uh, Greg Schiano did exactly what he should should have done because he's playing with house money because the risk factor goes away. He was never going to win that game. Therefore, there's no mm-hmm. risk to calling a trick play. Allow you, your team to have fun against a team they're not going to beat. Yeah. Now, well, what do you think his players would rather do? 
go up, line up, run into the line of scrimmage 30, you know, 70 times, go lose 56 to nothing again, or say, guys, we took it to Ohio State in the second half. We took it to them. If we could have capitalized that all game, this might have been anybody's ball game. Guys, mm-hmm. that's one of the best teams in the country. We're building something here. I told I could just see Shiano and look, look, guys, I told you we were building something here. And the players are going, I I think we I think we might be building something. We 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 won that second half. Yeah. So I I I I tip my cap to him. And especially as a defensive coach, right? Because a defensive coach, you usually don't think will be that of def, you know inventive and creative. He was, he let it rip, man. I'm, you know, he, I think he's like I said before in the last podcast. He, they need to give him a lifetime contract and just have him. He needs to accept it. Rutgers is his bag, and he does a great job there. And he's got them more competitive than they've been in years. And people need to also take this in context that. Last year we only beat them fifty six twenty one, and they actually made us look silly again. a couple times. You know, yeah. Uh, Garrett Wilson, the, the muff punt, things like that. They score right a couple plays after on a thirty three yard. I think it was thirty three yard rushing touchdown. Put it in perspective. Our team is not excited to play Rutgers, and I'm not disrespecting Rutgers. I mean, we have disrespected them quite a bit on the show, but in that statement, I'm not disrespecting them. It just is what it is. The talent disparity is beyond imaginable. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and it's uh, that's okay. That's what that's the way of the world in 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 college football. But I will and I will say that you know people need to relax a little bit on this game because I saw some prognostications on the on the Twitter timeline on the Twitter uh, dot com dot com. Yeah, that app, you know that app, that free app, that's awesome. Uh, the people saying we're not going to win a title, not we're not going to win a natty, we're not going to yeah, do this. Not, gonna, yeah. Like we said, Corey, not like that. You're not. We understand that. We were disgusted too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't mean necessarily that this is what you're going to get every time. Yes, yeah. the team needs to get better. Yes, That's that was Michael gross. Bam. Thank you. <laughs> yes, that we need to get better. Yes, that was gross. Yes, that effort won't win you a title, not even close. Mm-hmm. But, you think they're going to show up with that lack of interest against no. like Bama or Clemson? I mean, they didn't. On, they didn't. They didn't against Penn State. They made mistakes, but they didn't. Defensive line was intense against Penn State. Uh, yeah, that. But that's, that's more the effort you would have gotten. And that's another thing I'd like to address really quickly is that people were talking about the third and fourth stringers. I mean, Bryson Shaw was playing for crying out loud. Maybe he should play more. He looked pretty good, but uh, he was playing. They were down. They were emptying the bench, you know. And people were talking about them like they were starters. And I had the I had a couple folks who engaged with me on Twitter, more than a more than a couple actually, say to me, "Well, they're they're going to be starters. That's why we're judging them that way." It's like the fact you're saying they're going to be means you are acknowledging that they are not yet starters, and therefore you're not yet starter quality. They're yeah. going to make mistakes. This is a perfect opportunity in a game we are not going to lose. That allow them to develop a little well, bit. Well, and they kept them, remember, that last drive, the, the non-starters kept them out of the end zone. Mm-hmm. And also, didn't it kind of look to you, Corey, that the, it was called kind of vanilla defense? Yeah. And it was, it almost looked like a, 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 you know, not quite prevent, but it almost looked like the, the those backups, those last that last drive was like told, hey, just keep them in front of you. Just play soft, keep them in front of you. Mm-hmm. It, I mean, it looked, because... All the underneath stuff was just kind of there because of the cushion was there. Is the way it looked to me watching it the first time. Yeah, it's just it it, it was a little vanilla, I, and I think they just there's a purpose to this. So you got to let these guys to get some reps and playing time. We're actually probably Ryan Day's probably a little upset. And he said he was disappointed in the second half. He's probably a little upset he couldn't get one of the quarterbacks in because uh, the game was never completely out of hand. You know, like okay, now it's Stroud or Miller time. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, we came out and punted our first two drives in the second half when we, that was supposed to put the game away. Which you can't blame that on defense. That was probably if I had to go back and look, that was probably some offensive linemen. That's snappy. that has been an issue. That's where I came out of this game a little bit concerned. Remember, we talked about the Rutgers game. We said, "Let's see our run game against Rutgers uh, defense that uh, does not as good against the run." Now, to our credit, we averaged five yards per carry as a team. Surprisingly, uh, that's still not Ohio State standard, but it's not. You know, dreadful is you know, yeah. Whatever. Uh, it's but workable. It's but it's but again, I will say this: this is an issue. 
Master Teague and Trey Sermon, who are our two main running backs, whether you like it or not. Uh, this is where I don't get people saying Master Teague. We're going back to offense now, obviously. is is so much better than Sermon. Master Teague had a long run of 25. Sermon had a long of 36. Without those runs, I know you, you take the runs. Okay, I get it. Without those runs, though, uh, we had eight rushing first downs between them. I don't know who got who, how many got who, you know, who got the most or whatever. But they averaged 3.1 and 2.9 yards per carry beyond besides those two runs. That's not good, you know. Yeah. And and again, now granted, they're stacking the box. I don't know why teams are selling out to stop the run against us when they know Justin Fields can just dime you all day. It doesn't make. But I guess they. It's amazing that teams are picking their poison right now and saying, well, instead of just gashing us in the run game, we're gonna we're gonna let probably the best quarterback in college football just shred us with two of the best receivers in college football. It's be- because you get that sometimes you'll get the result like you did with us in the third quarter, where we don't we won't. It's like I think you could pass it on me if you wanted to, but you won't. I think you'll keep running into this brick wall, Ryan Day, and he's shown that he will. Well, if you're up by thirty two. Well, so you just do something that doesn't work, and you punt two straight times. He, you just said he wanted to get his backups in. You can't get your backups in if you don't score. Yeah, I agree, but he's also trying to uh, establish a run game, right? So, and that, so that's why I think, to your point, that's why I think the teams are doing it. They're going. If you think they're about to run at you, you play the run. Oh no, I, that's a fair point. Yeah, I just it just, uh, but uh, early in games, even you know, it's like it's because I think we lean on it. You know, we don't throw as much as we could. No, we only throw about thirty-eight to forty percent of the game. That's actually uh, statistically what we're. But we we in this game, I looked it up. We threw about forty-one percent versus the thirty-eight percent we usually do. Uh, so we, they actually forced us to throw it just a touch more than we normally do. Um, but that being said, even early in games, I I get you want to stop the run, make us one-dimensional, but that dimension that we have is pretty elite. So and and you, even on third and long, it doesn't seem to matter. No. So, I would uh, do that though. I would if I was if I played Ohio State because they're so willing to just keep running the ball. I would say I I dare you to throw it five hundred times because I don't think you will. Uh, maybe I mean if you force Ryan Day's hand, he will, and he showed that against Rutgers even when we uh, that and, last bomb to Carcelave. It's just like all right, fine. But it, but he's still like to my point. He only ended up throwing it forty one percent of the time. Yeah, but he's. I mean, when we did it when we had to score. I mean, it's just yeah. like okay, we're just. It's a, that's the poison you want to pick is our inefficient run game versus our incredibly elite pass game. All right, well, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I think, but I, I think it's inefficient because we run into the teeth. Yeah, I agree, we do, but that's my. But it, it doesn't seem to matter. Is my point? You know, it's like okay, you picked it. Great, we got right. Justin Fields. Yeah, I mean, look, the, 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 when we had JT Barrett. I totally got it. Right. Right. Yeah. I dare you. I dare you to do it. Yeah. No, I get it. I just, and it's probably like one of those things when it's, you know, yeah, all the receivers and stuff are great, but maybe we get home with a blitz. Maybe somebody commits a holding penalty. Maybe we can, we can. Whoever does that on our offense. Yeah. Right. Maybe fields won't see the blitz coming. Maybe it'll slip through somebody's hands and throw an interception. Kind of the Woody Hayes philosophy. Right, only two things can ha- three things happen. Two of them's bad. Uh, I, that must be where they're going. Mm-hmm. Um, but but the run game. This is a game where the run game looked good when it looked good. <laughs> you know what I mean? In some flashes, there were gaping holes. Mm-hmm. I, I am of the camp, and I can't prove this with a lot of data. I am of the camp that Teague's the guy now. But I, your point is well received that a lot of times Sermon was asked to run into nothing, just like Teague was. And when you take the wrong long run away, they're both like, well, some plays Teague just gets hit at the line. And I'm like, well, I don't really know what I expected him to do there. They were unblocked. Yeah. No, I'm not putting it all on. I just, they hear, you know what it is? Hmm. I don't think, Sermon offers me anything really that Teague doesn't now that Teague's learning to be more elusive. I think Teague's faster. I think Teague's stronger. I think uh, I think Sermon has a little more wiggle, but it's not doing anything. 
Um, I think T- Thurman, unfortunately, I think, is indecisive right now. I think T- – well, that's how he's always – he's always been this patient, set-up-my-blocks guy running against Little League defenses in the Big 12. Mm-hmm. And I just I just don't think he's the guy, and I'm ready to revoke his scholarship. <laughs> I want to see Marcus Crowley when he's healthy. That's who I want to see at this point. That would be nice. I think the one-two punch with Teague and McCall could be really nice. Now, I don't know what the heck – Why don't we play McCall? I don't, I don't know. Get this. I bet you he is a liability in pass coverage. I bet you you can only play him in So time. are the other two. <laughs> I don't think so. I think they're decent in pass coverage. I don't know. I've seen Sermon Antigue miss some blitzes. Uh, I, they pro- I mean, I'm sure they're not perfect, but I would think Damari McCall, if he picked up a blitz, might be in the hospital. I don't get you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you don't want to get the kid hurt, do you? Hey, uh, hey, hey, who didn't pick up that? Oh. Oh, I got it. Yeah. Get the gurney. Um, yeah, like I maybe it looked like the few plays we went to him, we knew he wasn't going to be a part of pass protection, and that's just why we went to him. Again, I, though, I, I just he's such an explosive player. How do we not figure out how to put him on the field is beyond me. Especially when the run game's sputtering, right? Yeah. Screw yeah. imagine the McCall in a screen game. Come on. <laughs> Wait, and, and yes, and like you said, well, sometimes we want to get to the edge. Neither Teague nor Sermon seem like they're edge guys. Mm-mm. And McCall, if you find an edge rusher, a stretch, a stretch play, that type of thing, wouldn't McCall be the guy if you're not going to give it to Crowley or Chambers? I, I think the thing that's giving Teague the edge right now in p- fans' minds is that he actually has a niche where he's a yes. power runner. He's where figuring Sermon out who to have a niche right now. Right, Sir, Teague. What you just said, he's figuring out who he is and rolling with it. Mm-hmm. Where Teague, or excuse me, where Sermon is, he, I'm telling you, I have not seen a lot of running backs run. Look, go look at his Oklahoma highlights. He runs straight up and down like a wide receiver, and he's kind of weaves and patient and block. You know, KJ Hill would make people miss, and you go, I don't really know why that guy missed. KJ didn't really do anything dynamic, but he sure made him miss. He had that ability. Um, it, you know, and the indecisiveness is not working. <laughs> It's just that, not working right Yeah, now. he's only had a couple months in the offense. I still got to remind people of that. But, again, it. I thought he showed a little bit of improvement towards the end of the game. You know, until he got hurt. But he was finally just going. You know, it's like that 36-yard run. He just saw the, okay, it's a stretch. I'm going. Get it. Uh, yep. Instead of dancing. You know, he likes to right. dance around a little bit. Uh, that's the thing that we miss with J.K. It was one decision and go. Yep. He was, I mean, when he stopped dancing in the background, it was like he became that 2,000-yard rusher. I'm hoping one of these guys – I don't care who it is at this point. Maybe the guy's even on the bench. I don't know. Uh, I hope it's somebody can just decide, I'm just going to go. But I will say this. It won't matter if the middle of our line can't get it together. No, <laughs> it sure won't. Because uh, I did see some plays. I mean, I was talking to my father about it during the game when I saw Sermon get the ball. Three guys met him behind the line of scrimmage. I'm like, well, what do you want him to do? Right. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was kind of like a jailbreak up there. No, you, it, some things have to be shorn. Like we said, some runs will get stuffed. We understand that, but you, it seems to happen a little more often uh, than we. Well, Miller's we got to get better, and Myers has got to trust him. I mean, that's how I feel about the offensive line. I will say this: I thought Petit Freer would be the weak spot because I was not terribly impressed last year, but he has been dominant. So he he looks really good. Mumford looks good. Um, at this. Yeah, I, we could get into the depth all day of the line, and, and uh, I was maybe one of those fans where privately I was calling for a certain. Well, let's end on this. What do you grade the team for the uh, not the position by position? What do you grade the team overall for this win? This win. Yep. Generous C. I'll C see. minus. I'll say C plus because Fields drags it from a D plus. Yeah, uh, I mean it. They were they. Fields was probably an A, and the receivers were probably an A A plus. Uh, the rest, but and I will say that a pleasant surprise, two pleasant surprises. I'll say from this game, A Rucker is a red zone threat is a pleasant surprise. Uh, he is a yeah. He is well, a, we said he'd have to be because somebody had to replace KJ just yep, in a different and way, and he's he's doing it. Uh, he'll get his four catches for 30 yards and a touchdown is what he seems to be the, the trend. Yep. Uh, and also, Johnny, did you notice the backup defensive tackles were looking better? Vincent, Jackson, and Cage were all looking better this game. I didn't notice 
that because they didn't create ha- but i noticed the line was creating getting, havoc but they right, but the line, the line. They, yeah i noticed the line the line was constantly getting pushed a little backwards there was holes being filled rutgers just couldn't run in the middle of the 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 line so if you tell me a lot of times it was the backups in then i believe you that they they certainly showed some improvement well, jackson actually got some penetration at times and cage actually was not getting penetration but he was stuffed in the middle and again, Vincent made a couple nice uh, tackles for loss. So, yeah, I think well, they look better, and that's going to be so important going forward. Yeah. Well, to end real quick, uh, look, this a C C plus. Corey, give him a give him a, a B plus. What did you say? A B, B minus. Plus. C, plus. C plus. Oh, okay. Uh, I think I got a, a C. I I'm mad at the world. Um, you know, C minus on if I really want to be honest, but I don't. <clears throat> like I said, I think it can get better. Um, the big 10 is just odd this year. Mm -hmm. Um, we have Maryland coming up. At least there's some excitement with Maryland and Indiana coming up because those are Indiana's, Indiana's a legit top 10 team. Not most years this year, they're legit top 10 team. Mm -hmm. uh, From what I could tell, um, Michigan's not good. Penn state's not good. Maryland's pretty decent and Northwestern is the best team in the big 10. So, well, we're gonna yeah, we're gonna talk about this in the Maryland, Maryland beat Penn State worse than we did. Yeah, so but we're I think the play. the Big Ten standings: Northwestern, Maryland, Ohio State, right now one, two, and three. We're gonna talk about the Maryland preview coming in later in the week, but I'm telling you right now, the fact that Penn State couldn't even complete a pass against them is fool's gold. So, uh, oh, you sound like a Michigan fan, though. What you sound like? No, what, I don't, really, actually. what really no. happened didn't happen. No, you're okay. Yeah, you're right. Maryland's defense is impenetrable. You got it. Well, they, they stopped Penn State. So better than we did. They didn't stop Minnesota. No, but we haven't played the juggernaut like Minnesota yet. All right. I, we got to end the show. I'm about to hit you. So. <laughs> well, no, you, you're always like, well, Penn State, they did tune up Penn State, but they didn't really. I No, they tuned up Penn State, but again, they, I don't trust that their defense is so good that Sean Clifford can't complete a pass against them. Oh, yeah, probably not. Probably not. But but I'd, I'd have to watch the game. I'd have to go back and watch the game. Did Sean Clifford have zero, zero completions? He had like 11. 11? Yeah, he was, many, no, he was bad. He was like 11 for 35 or some crazy number. It was bad. I'd have to go look at I wonder if there were some drops and things or what. Yeah, there was 22 drops, yep. I mean, six or seven. I, I doubt that, but again, they, they only have Dotson and Freermuth, and you know this is the that. problem when we have lives. This is because we could yeah. have watched the game and we could have actually told you what happened and what the stats aren't telling you. But we mm. both have lives and we didn't go watch the. We'll game. We'll do that later this week. Let's do that. Let's do that and then continue this discussion in a, in the next episode. I gotta go work out anyway. So yeah, man, why don't we just quit our lives and? and live under a bridge and talk about football. They have Wi-Fi there so we can do the podcast. Let's do that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that it will be interesting though, right? Because I, I want to know how in the heck they beat Penn state worse than we did, especially when they struggle with Minnesota. And, uh, I well, think our offense isn't a problem unless it's playing Northwestern. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. Northwestern must be, maybe it needs to go. Maybe Northwestern's the play, the fourth playoff team. Didn't they smash? They beat Nebraska, and then but then they and they, they smashed Maryland. They smashed Maryland. No, they they beat Nebraska by pretty decent. twenty-one to thirteen or something like that. No, look so it up right go. now. I am looking it up right now. There you go, making stuff up again. Twenty-one to thirteen. <laughs> that's not barely. That's barely. That's a, that's a whole touchdown. Plus end one. the show, please. You're killing me. That's a whole touchdown plus one. They scored three of the four quarters. Nebraska didn't score in the second half. That's Shut why out. Nebraska fans are asking us if Adrian Martinez should be benched. <laughs> he now he was twelve for twenty-seven. Ooh, and McCaffrey was twelve for sixteen. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> now that's another thing. If we didn't have lives, Corey, we could have watched the Nebraska game, our second team, and gave a better answer for that. Cancel your workout and let's just go watch some football. No? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. We got to get out of here. Uh, this, 
I understand. You got to keep up with the hotness, your newfound hotness that everyone's talking uh, about. Jeez. One person. <laughs> you, it's not just one person. Anyways. I know you think I'm hot, but you've always thought I was hot. That's true. All right. We got to get at that. This will be fun. I am actually looking forward. Um, I all oh, spoiler alert. I had coach, uh, coach Smith agreed to talk to us a little bit about Maryland. So we'll definitely ah, get it. <laughs> We're going to wear that out it's so bad. And I'm, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Um, no, I, I am interested in this Maryland thing. It's intriguing. I'm not saying they're world beaters. I, I don't think we should beat them soundly, but it is intriguing. It is intriguing. I want to see. They're going to cause some fits, but we're going to beat them. So. Yeah, I think. Of course, me and I'm you. I'm not convinced ha- anybody can stop Fields. I'm not convinced we can stop anybody. So I'm a, I am absolutely convinced we can stop people. I don't. I'm not. Um. But well, we could. Well, we we slowed Penn State down ish. I'm not convinced. I don't know what we were doing in the second half going soft coverage. I'm getting tired of Coach Combs doing that. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay, I don't know that we won't do that, and I don't. Um, you, you I was going to say you have a bad history with Maryland because I took you to a Maryland game and we we won by a point. Off Thank of you, a, Coach Shiano. Yeah, yeah. So it's a weird year, but we'll get out of here and see this. This will be a lot of fun. It's, Fair to say, Corey, this is the most – this should, next upcoming show will be the most interesting Ohio State-Maryland preview of all time. Easily. Easily, right? That's yeah. the most I've ever cared about the game. I, uh, You know, like like a gentleman from another podcast said, this uh, the Rutgers game was the most frustrating game he's ever watched, and I'm just convinced he just started watching Ohio State last year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, stick around for a couple years, buddy. You uh, you missed the entire 2018 season, apparently. Yeah, that was and, a frustrating year. In like the first six games of 2015. Western Michigan, I think we beat them by seven. Right, right. Aaron oh. Lee decided to end that crap and go pick six them, you know. But it, it, again, it was like, dude, this was a frustrating game, but I could think of like 10 off the top of my head that were worse. Right. It can always get worse, uh, just like this show. We appreciate oh, you it guys. Will. It will. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Thanks. Always, if we're looking at us on YouTube, listening to us, however you listen to us, as always, we bid you goodbye. God bless and go Bucks. Loved it.